Hi, everybody. Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany and our very special Halloween episode of Blades and Bodice Rippers Book Club. We're all dolls, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Happy Halloween. But Bethany, why are we dolls? We are dolls because the book we're reading, or read rather, are discussing, is The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter, which does have creepy dolls in it. <laughs> I mean they're used creepily but like the dolls themselves are just dolls but they're creepy they're Once not again, like haunted dolls but they're creepy dolls the uncle's are creepy. Just, the, the uncle's uncle is, creepy the dolls the are just dolls super creepy. I feel like the dolls are kind of creepy too but you know <laughs> anyway <laughs> so that is what we're here to discuss welcome everybody I feel like probably y'all should know everyone but if y'all want to go around and introduce yourselves um, and how what do you think of the book it's gonna be an interesting conversation you, do you want to start this way do you want to go clockwise <laughs> <laughs> um i yes um anyway sorry sorry greg walked into the room um and i saw already <laughs> anyway hi everybody never a dull moment <laughs> i am amanda the naughty librarian and um, I decided to be Chucky because like haunted doll, hello, mm -hmm. the most haunted doll, but I'm also in Chucky's wine era. Um, that's who I am. <laughs> and um, I did not like this book. There was no magic and I'm upset and I gave it one star. Cause like I- This is this is literally the like one star for Wolf on Wall Street, no wolves. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. It's a magic toy shop and there's like weird puppets and shit. Like there, I was expecting magic and I got no magic unless you mean like domestic abuse and incest is magical, then yes. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Moving on. That's really horrifying. <laughs> it is horrifying. Yeah. Are we? Yes. Okay. Liana. Um, I'm Liana. Um, I'm not any particular doll. I'm just generally a doll. And um, I... You got uh, the doll giving... curl going really well. Good, as I, I was telling Bethany before we went live, like what my curls were more like hers when I did it, but they have slowly like coalesced into a single curl. So, but that's more doll like, I feel. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, the book was not what I expected, but I don't, I didn't feel like that strongly one way or the other about it. And what I said about it on Goodreads, which I don't really have much more to say than this, is that it seemed to me like if Shirley Jackson wrote the series of unfortunate events, then this is the book you would get. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, I also got the unfortunate events vibe from yeah. this. Yeah. Um, I'm Mara from Books Like Woe. I am Felicity. So I, I guess I'm scary in the Uncanny Valley sense. Um, and I thought that this was fine. I think that this definitively told me that I prefer Angela Carter's short stories to her novels, because this is the second novel I've read from her and neither of them I clicked with that much. Um, but I gave it three stars. I thought it was fine. I really, the writing I thought was a standout, but everything else was a little forgettable to me. Like I read this yesterday and I'm already like trying to remember everything that I read. So, but I like the writing. I like the themes. Um, I am not any specific sort of doll, but I just was like, just a, a vaguely <laughs> the doll. hair. The hairline, I th I feel like is correct for a doll. Yeah, I th I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I probably liked this better than anybody else. I gave it like I was between like a four and a four and a half star. It's. Okay. <laughs> dark like it was a lot um but I feel like at least I had read some Angela Carter before so I sort of knew what I was getting into which I don't know Liana Amanda I know you said you haven't read her before okay yeah so it I guess I wasn't as surprised, <laughs> as surprised. yeah no I I knew what I was in for this is very her yeah it's like a lot of like mythology and fairy tale and whatever like mashups domestic and domestic horror has yeah. anyone seen the film version a, no. they put this on film 
I and know. and Angela Carter wrote the script. Wow. Have you has anyone seen it? Have you seen it? I was like when I saw that there was one, I had originally planned to watch it before this, but I didn't like the book enough to want to sit through another two hours of the same story. So I have not watched it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying it's out there and I was yeah. curious if anyone else saw it. That's interesting. I'd be kind of curious to see how they do it on film. It would be intense though. Yeah, I I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's not my kind. It wouldn't be my kind of movie. Yeah, I think. But fair. That's fair. Um, I guess I thought it was a really effective at doing what it was trying to do. In what terms, would you describe? Like, what do you believe trying to do? <laughs> I guess in terms of like trying to talk about like domestic abuse and the impact of it, and also like. Because it's also partly this coming of age story, and but like you see this major shift right between before <laughs> the parents die and what possibilities there seem to be in her life, and how much that narrows with poverty, with like a situation that's like poverty and abusive. I, I mean, was... to me, so like I well, I already said it that I was like Shirley Jackson writing unfortunate series, unfortunate events. But like the reason is because the writing and the tone of it really reminded me of um, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Mm -hmm. And then the storyline is so very similar to the very first unfortunate events book where they go to live with their uncle and the uncle has a theater troupe and he makes the daughter be in the play for this creepy marriage ceremony. And I was just like, I wonder if like, uh, I know his name is not actually Lemony Snicket, but like, you know, Lemony Snicket. I wonder if he was at all inspired by this book because like the the plot and there's like three Maybe. siblings in that in that series and it's the oldest it's this girl and she's the one that kind of takes charge and again she's like forced to be in this like fake marriage ceremony that's like part of the play and like there's these weird you know it was very similar that's interesting <laughs> i never read them so i didn't pick up on that but i wonder if i mean you might be right i wonder if you read this i don't know for me it was more like series of unfortunate events meets flowers in the attic so yikes i don't know i i'm the outlier here usually usually it's not me i'm the liana today <laughs> embrace your role as a uh, edgelord i am you know this a murder doll so let's go yeah <laughs> i get why it would definitely not be what everybody would want to read it was it was a lot i wonder too because amanda you'd put in the group chat like heads up everyone like incest ahead ahoy incest ahead um so maybe like i was braced for it a little bit more so it didn't feel as bad as i was expecting on that front i yeah. kept expecting a magical twist because magic oh. toy shop and i was like maybe they were dolls and this is like a fucked up pinocchio and he like created his wife and that's why she can't speak because mm. he didn't make her vocal cords and then like la 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 they're magical dolls but nope just just horrible incest and abuse <laughs> and i was like how there's not even a little not, not even a little bit of magic and i was i was upset <laughs> I, would just, I would say mm, well not magic there is a well, kind magical of, realism yeah the, it feels like a kind of magical realism -y vibe to me like it yeah, felt it fabulous is that all right yeah here? i like a french film well, you're yeah, not exactly sure where you're puppets. standing. The ultra-realistic puppets or whatever he makes that he uses to sexually assault his niece with a swan, for fuck's sake. Like, I, like, I thought they, they weren't even in the book enough. <laughs> like yeah. Anyway, I am a one star. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was, so like, just going to some of her like bigger, like her other works, I think probably the thing she's best known for is The Bloody Chamber which is a short story collection it's like an all-time favorite for me it's like a top like in my top 10 books so good. um and it's all of these fairy tales retold with like feminist violent themes so it's like bringing out the underlying violent subtext of mythos and fairy tales that we all know so i think i can yeah, like I think I, this is what I would expect from her based on that book yeah. or based on that collection. Because I think it's supposed to be like Alita and the Swan 
kind yeah. of retelling and bringing out like how fucking horrifying that whole story is of like I kept thinking I forget his name already the the dirty guy who I always ben. thought of him as a Weasley brother but ben. um <laughs> Which is like a, her kind of love interest. Yeah. Because he was like ginger and like <laughs> dangly. Anyway, um, because he kept saying, Oh, I killed the swan. I killed the swan. And I was like, Did he kill the uncle? Because everyone seems to be having a really good time right now because the uncle's not there. And I'm like, Did he kill the uncle? Did he uh, bury the uncle in the park? I was hoping mm -hmm. he dismembered the uncle and then he just shows up and everyone dies. And I was like, What? Spoilers. Sorry, oh. everybody. But I don't I think they die. For magic or mayhem. Well, the main I character. I every, well, it's implied that everybody dies in the fire except the two of them. I was going to yeah, say, that's not everybody. That they kill the children. <laughs> they kill Is that the them just being hopeful? It's unclear. It's oh. very unclear. Both well, I've been reading a lot of Nora Roberts, so in my mind, they got out and they are living happily elsewhere. <laughs> He Wait, we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about like the main girl and Finn. They definitely got out. Well, they, they got, got out. But also, I think like I, but it, it's and implied that like Francie maybe everybody and... else died in the fire. Yeah. yeah, it's implied that they could have, but they said that they found a way out, and I believe I I'm gonna believe that. Okay. It does in general end very abruptly. Yeah, yeah. It, it did kind of just cuts off. Yeah, even the dog. Like I, she was more concerned about the dog than her siblings. <laughs> She's like, did the dog get out? The dog can get itself out, and like. What about well, your five-year-old is... sister and your and your weird brother who's like, I don't know, 10? Like, they're dead. And the they're baby. dead in this house with yeah. your creepy uncle. Yeah. <sighs> you know. I mean, it's hard because it's like she can't, I don't know. Like, it is hard when you, like, feel like you're supposed to have the sense of responsibility. No, for... I get it. Like, I get her character not going back to save them. That makes a lot of sense for her. But I'm just like, wait a minute. I read this whole book. <laughs> and then everybody dies. <laughs> what? That, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a hard launch out of the book. You know? It's like, I'm just, I'm done now. <laughs> it's, well, it's so kind of funny. reminiscent, actually. When I watch a lot of old, like, black and white movies just because I like to. But no matter how many times I watch an old black and white movie, it never ceases to surprise me how abruptly they end. Like black and white movies, they just like they finish telling the story and there's no like like falling action. Falling action it's just like, oh, movie. the end, big, big yep. fin written in black and white. You're like, and oh, scene. OK, <laughs> I guess we're done. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I also think I did. I remember when I finished this yesterday, I did look up a few things about this. I think this, this was her debut or like an early novel from her. Yeah. So I also wonder because yeah, I found debut, it to be I think it was her first novel. Maybe it was her, her first, first novel, writing. novel. Maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe this was her like kind of learning how to do storytelling still, because um, I don't think this is sophisticated as the Bloody Chambers no. version of things. No, but I still liked it. I thought it was interesting. I mean, I do think it's pretty effective at drawing sort of like this sexual awakening coming of age of the young mm -hmm. you know the the girl at the beginning and i don't know and it's definitely highlighting the horror that is just like being a woman yeah. in patriarchy yeah like and like the the villain is patriarchy yeah maybe that also be, capitalism which is that that really 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 like, like, like the aunt being silent ever since her wedding day it's like the li literal imposed silence of there's women. a lot of layers to dig through that she also makes yeah. her wear a literal collar when they fuck <laughs> like yeah. oh my god there's just layers of trauma to go through <laughs> yeah that was a lot that's a lot <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. The other thing is that the way Angela Carter writes, which I I find a couple of passages to read just to give people if they didn't read the book a sense of how I think nice her writing is. But like the way she writes, it's very sort of like borderline stream of consciousness, like just sort of like ethereal. So like when those kinds of details drop, I can kind of like not fully clock them and then I'll be, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Did she actually that's have why, a collar on? That's why it reminded me so much of We Have Always Lived in the Castle because yeah. I feel like it's, that's the same kind of like it's wispy, vibey, hazy it's daydream like quality of like how the whole thing is yeah. told. Yeah. She did not wear it all the time. She wore it only on Sundays. 
when they fuck. <laughs> yeah, Sunday is the day that they. Sunday's fuck day. Yes. Lisa's not every day, so that's the only thing like she's got going for her. Yeah. But like but she yeah. wears her like gray dress. And her collar. Yeah, her sackless shape of a dress and her collar. And that that's fuck day. That she can't eat in. Barely. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, I mean, that's the thing is it's also like a mode of control of, I don't know. It's interesting because he controls everything. Honestly, so, I was like more horrified by the description of the way the money is handled in the household. I was like the sense of tra entrapment of not having the resources to yeah. do anything mm -hmm. is like, I'm like, I mean, obviously physical violence is, is scary, but I don't know. It's like, it's the not having a way out yeah. that that part yeah. is like, I don't know that it's worse, but that's what stuck out to me so much that like all of mm -hmm. the shopping is on account. So there's no physical money ever being given. No money is ever handed to her. She never sees any of the money. There's literally like, there, there's nothing. There's no way for her to like do anything, to steal anything, to whatever. Well, mm. except that she is running the store. And so she sees all these bills overflowing out of the drawer, and yet she has no access to any of it. Yeah. <sighs> you so know, I don't the, really think they're in poverty either, <laughs> by the no, way. No, he has money. They no, have, they have plenty of money for hot water. Yeah. They're he's just an a -hole. controlling them. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> book that this now that we're talking this through that this kind of reminds me of is um her body and other parties by Ooh. carmen marie machado i think that there's a lot of overlap on themes here like the collar kind of reminds me yeah. of that bow story mm -hmm. which you know i gotta be careful to keep this on yeah. um but yeah there's thematically i think there's a lot of overlap with that collection which i loved that collection so i guess it makes sense I did why, too. This, why this worked for me too even though it's not like my yeah. favorite version of it i still yeah yeah but it is tragic yeah it is weird too like i, I feel like she does there's these like visceral details because like with finn the way she describes like you know what he like looks like and smells like and like the weird like repulsion attraction she experiences is you know, I have a I I, I mark definitely one of these to talk. To you, so yeah, I just started calling him Dirty Weasley. Yeah, <laughs> he just seems uh, like one of the Weasley brothers, but dirty. See. Okay, so this is like towards the end of the book, but it's not necessarily a spoiler. Though we, it's book club, so we can do whatever we want here. Um, they might have been married for years in Victoria, their baby. Melanie had a prophetic vision as Finn sat beside her in his outrageous jacket unclean in the clean sheets yawning so that she saw the ribbed red cathedral of his mouth and all the yellowed teeth like discolored choir boys she knew they would get married one day and live together all their lives and there would always be pervasive squalor and dirt and mess and shabbiness always forever and ever and babies crying and washing to be done and toast burning for the rest of her life and never any glamour or romance or charm nothing fancy only mess and babies with red hair and that is my nightmare <laughs> so i think this, this just like feeds qualifies into, as horror. <laughs> this feeds into my constant hyper fixation on like period pieces and everyone's like breath and teeth because there's always these period pieces where they're like breathing up in each other's faces and i'm like you know they didn't wash their mouths right Do you know how net like they don't smile in portraits because they didn't have teeth and i'm like when they're all like you know oh i yearn for you <sighs> and i'm just like but it's like yeah. before yeah. dentistry like Elizabethan era, it was popular to have rotting teeth because it showed you you could afford sugar. Yeah. yeah. So everyone had gross ass fucking teeth. But like, if everybody has gross teeth, then it's just like, well. I mean, like I specifically in Pride and Prejudice, like they comment on like li like Lizzie's attributes in Pride and Prejudice, and they're like, her teeth are like decent, you know, not out of the common way. And I'm yeah. just like, the idea that you're listing like like teeth is one of the things is like, well, she has them, but they're like fine. It's, like, <laughs> Oh, what is everyone else's teeth like oh yeah you know that mr collins has some like halitosis like oh yellow 100%. nubs 100%. he would eat cheese before coming in for a kiss i've got to say the way i just felt such a release of tension the one time finn took a bath and put on clean clothes <laughs> That's why I thought he killed the guy because he's been obviously not bathing and being filthy as an act to like piss this guy off to like get all the attention on him to defend. But it seems to me that it wasn't I'm just like it wasn't just filth; it was illness, you know, because he got like hurt badly and that well, like that like I thought depression or something. Yeah, but so I was... I got the impression that there was like infection and fever and that like he was 
ill and like oh. that was part of the smell see i thought it i didn't think that i thought it was that he like had something knocked loose in his brain like had some like brain damage from the fall mm -hmm. and that be that's that why well. he was acting differently yeah because well he didn't have the coordination anymore to do his like river dance that he was yeah. doing <laughs> throughout the book yeah so like there was some kind of brain damage that happened yeah. Anyways, no, I get Finn. I get it. He's like, look at me. Look at me. I'm the biggest asshole in the room. Like, beat up on me, not everyone else. Like, I get Finn. And he's, like, the least rapey of them. Like, I, I like yeah. him. But, like, if, if your whole, like, winning attribute is that you're the least rapey, <laughs> the bar is very low. Yeah. Well, I like that he's at least self-aware enough to be like, it's just proximity. You're into me because there's no one else here anywhere close yeah. to your age. He's like, I kissed you once and you were obviously not into this. Yeah. He's like, maybe right. when you're older. <laughs> Like I'll, I backed off. Like he's not a creep. Like he has that going for him. Well, other than the other than the spy hole in her bedroom. Yeah, but he, at least he wasn't like jerking off to it. He just wanted to paint her. So I'm like, that yeah, could that mean her. that's the official party line. I but, mean, yeah. I mean, well, you know what? If you got a glory hole and you're a creepy redhead, <laughs> I feel like what? the red hair is immaterial. Yeah, should I take offense? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh no i just like but also it kind of goes with melanie because is her name melanie i forget melanie. her name already. yeah yeah um she like always weird wanted name. to be perfect and like she's 15 i feel like she comes across as a 15 year old yeah. where she's like oh my gosh look at my tits i haven't i grew them myself yeah she wants to be thought of as like beautiful and then someone like just appreciating her beauty beauty and actually not trying to actively assault her yeah. is like dreamboat for her well i which i think is really accurate to what it's like to be that age i think what's what what's like tragic about her story though is that like maybe she's going to be stuck there because of the life she's in you know like that's yeah that like, well, maybe like otherwise this would be something she could grow out of yeah i liked her i liked her story because you felt 15 like a horned up 15 year old like i get it we were all horned up 15 year olds at least most of us at least i don't know, i can't talk for everybody but like yeah like i get her Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel like she rung true to a lot of teenagers that you don't see in books where they're, like, way obsessed with sex. Mm -hmm. Even though she's like, I've never even kissed anybody. But, like, when am I going to kiss somebody? I'm, I'm not going to get any better than I am now. Like, this weird, like, anxiety she has. Like, that was a part of the book I was fine with. Like, I get it. That's yeah. cool. But then yeah. she's all of, like, the... Like, that makes my skin crawl moments that I'm just like... <laughs> There, um, I, I really agree with you on that. I think that this was good as a coming of age story. Mm -hmm. Um, like I thought that that was very effectively conveyed. Yeah. So I'm not like an ogre. There were some things I liked here. <laughs> it's just it was an unpleasant reading I think, experience. Yeah. I, I'm getting you found it distasteful, which yeah, I think yeah. is a pretty fair response. I mean, to I think that's going on. Well, and, and I think in fairness, I think we would all be worried if you feel very fine with everything that happens in this book. Like, yeah. I, I think Angela means you to be uncomfortable. Yeah, she's not, <laughs> yeah. not like pro. This is a great home life situation. No. It's just you know, like, and then like this debate about is art subjective and it's just like yes the the story conveyed exactly what it was supposed to convey to me it made my skin crawl it made this me uncomfortable like when i, I feel like really it. uncomfortable around people that think that weathering heights is a great romance and i'm like yeah oh, that's no. fucked up at all yeah. levels <laughs> so if but someone like, liked the magic toy shop and they're like isn't it idyllic i'd be like you can hang out with the weathering heights people like i love <laughs> melanie and finn what a couple for the ages i it's show like, them <laughs> Yeah, but there's that. only like they're just still alive at the end. That's why they're together. <laughs> I mean, sometimes like, that's just that's all you got is like, hey, who who's left standing? I guess yeah. we're together now. I don't know. I don't see them like as end game. Anyway, we're not we're not speculating a sequel here, but like, <laughs> yeah. like I don't know. Like, I, I art is subjective and it's not subjective. Like, I understand the artistic merit of this. I think she she has like talent as a writer mm -hmm. is just personally i don't want to have my skin crawl for 200 pages even yeah. though i think that was Fair the enough. intended author message of the book well, is like, the this same is way gross and you should feel uncomfortable yeah the same way i don't want to read a book filled with like fungi growing on people oh oh god even just saying that was awful <laughs> um, 
Uh, like that's just not for me yeah. i would give something a one star if i had to read the yeah. whole thing of that yeah i mean yeah. i think that's that's definitely fair yeah it's you gave what moves the cover. dead one star well that didn't it wasn't only that no. i'm saying if it was like non-stop 200 pages of like describing every mushroom and fungi and mm -hmm. how it was like growing on living things that would be <laughs> That's the sound the fungus makes. When you get those I feel like I can feel it on me. Because so God, I hate that. Song. I mean, in well, fairness, I'm... like it was like weeks after the Last of Us ended before I could actually eat mushrooms again. This, this is why I didn't watch that show. I heard it was great, but it's not for me. I mean, fungus zombies are in a lot of books, like a lot of stories, more than you think. More than uh, more than you think. Yes, I agree. Um. um so I'm not going to go all the way back because we have a there were a lot of comments in here, but uh, let's see, it kind of let's see. Well, Angela Carter and Shirley Jackson they were contemporaries, right? Like they were writing around the same time. Probably. That seems right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, what Shirley Jackson was like the sounds. It'd be like Wednesday meets authors, like. <laughs> I feel like both of them girls friends. I feel like both of them are kind of products of their time in the way that like there's this kind of having only read one Angela Carter book and two Shirley Jackson books that like the the way that a lot of these things are not discussed and they are repressed and they are not considered to be a thing that should be talked about and the very fact that you are talking about these things is the horror of it like especially for its time is that like that you're not those are taboo subjects those are taboo thoughts to have those are taboo feelings to have and so then like that's what these books are is like one exploring it and two that's is half of the horror is just like that's on the surface level like that's what this book is about mm -hmm. um yeah and i think the other person i think of and it's like three two degrees of separation because when i think shirley jackson i usually also think flannery o'connor i think she also has a similar kind of project but just more in the like southern gothic end of things but that same sort of like oh god like this is so horrifying and it's also so ordinary and like yeah yeah well it's also kind of interesting because this is a book that where like i don't know exactly when it's supposed to be set maybe the 50s or 60s but it you know you feel her going to a not so recent past in the way that things are set up in this patriarchal home. So it's also interesting because it's like the world around them is modernizing, but the shop is set in the like stuck in the mm -hmm. past. Yeah. And then also the family structure is set in, stuck in the past in the same well, way. I think it is also a lot of um, this isn't like wholly true 100% of the time, but there is some of the like, the rich or the forward thinking and when you go to like a poorer household it's very traditional and it's like how this household is structured so she goes from a house with like modern appliances and modern conveniences and a modern couple in terms of how they were raising them and then she goes to this household that's like they have money but he acts like they don't and the household is very like traditional and it's yeah. like um in every sense of the word well and i don't think it's a coincidence that like what precipitates the parents being in an accident for like magical realism -y kind of reasons is her putting on a wedding her mother's wedding dress mm -hmm. and like taking on like starting to cosplay that kind of traditional patriarchal role yeah yeah um well and the parents are in it a plane crash right mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. it's like it seems like it's implying that's because she did the dress thing. Well, or I mean, I feel like that. I was yeah. gonna say it's, it's more just I feel like a lot of the times, like when parents like divorce or parents die, then and usually not. She's a little bit old for that, but like kids will blame themselves if their parents yeah. are getting divorced or if their parents die. It's like, oh, it's my fault. And I think it's kind of playing off of how she's um making sense of the senseless and blaming herself. I just liked the whole sequence because it was, you know, is this a coming of age story? And it's kind of like her saying goodbye to like childhood mm -hmm. in a way. Cause she's like, I'm going to play fancy for, dress up in the woods. And then this is my last hurrah. Oh shit. I'm going to be in so much trouble. Cause I locked myself out of the house cause I'm stupid. Yeah. And then like, Oh no, I've destroyed the dress. Okay. Okay. Maybe I can get out of this. You know, it's just kind of like saying goodbye to childhood. So I can't even symbolism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not a complete monster here. There are some good things in the book. 
<laughs> yeah, to be in her parents literally dying is like the literal death of her childhood and like her yeah. being thrust into this adult world. She's not like she's both ready for and not ready for. It's like, like now you have to be the little mother for your siblings. Yeah. It's yeah, it's all yeah. Forced motherhood is definitely a lot at 15. Yeah. yeah. I will say in general, Angela Carter, like if any students out there need to write like a symbolism paper, like hers are like easy because it's like, it's not that it's on the note. I mean, it is like obvious, but it's also well executed. Like it would be very easy to sit there and be like, here's, yeah. you know, let's unpack this motif. Let's unpack whatever. Right. That's Well, and then she thing. has like a lot of like literary allusions. And yeah. 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 Like yeah. Re unpack the references, mm -hmm. sort of like the color paper that people did. Did everybody had to write that for the Great Gatsby? Like, what pick a color and like go through and explain what it symbolized? I did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, out. I, forget, I think I picked green because of the green light. Because of the yeah. green light, green yeah. is the easy way to be yeah. obvious. Either green or white. I can't remember which it's one. Green. The light is green. The light is green, but yeah. Dude, fuck the Great Gatsby. I said what I said. Like, I... Uh, I That's another really one that if people think is a great romance, I'm like, you go sit with the Weathering Heights people. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like, I was like, I hate romantic. it. Oh well, my god. Oh, it's not. It's not. But a Great Gatsby, like, I hated it when I read it in high school, and then when I reread it a couple years ago, I was surprised at how much I liked it. Oh, I love that book, but I you don't... I get that... I, I get why people are sick of it. Like, I think it's over. I like it. I just, I'm very concerned at how romanticized it is. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I, yeah. I reread it as an adult and I still didn't like it. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I might have disliked it more because now I understood all the stuff in there. I mean, I anybody who, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole, like, capitalism truly is the villain in that one. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. And the Boz Lerman adaptation, that was the first time I ever liked a Boz Lerman movie. <laughs> Because oh. I was like, this, this, the wild, extravagant fever dream of his style is like, for the first time, I'm like, well, that's appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great Gatsby. Yeah. Well, and even in the choices, of, uh, you weren't, you weren't into. I don't like Moulin Rouge. Oh man, I love Moulin Rouge. <laughs> I know everyone loves Moulin Rouge. I don't get it. It was too sad for me. I didn't like it. I didn't care. <laughs> Why am I not shocked though? <laughs> I mean, honestly, when he's like, oh, at the end, I was like, pull it together, buddy. Like, I just, oh. <laughs> what is the He's like, what's to live for if not for love or something? I was like, oh my God, so much to live for. Like, please. <laughs> it was, he, it's his first love. He's feeling dramatic. I get it. I also, okay, don't murder me, but I also don't think that Nicole Kidman and Ewan McGregor have chemistry. So I also. Oh, I completely movie. agree with that. Okay, so I was like, yeah. I don't really buy this love story in the first place, and now we're killing ourselves. But I, killing again, ourselves. I, wanna, like, okay. I, I think that's jerk, fair, but, but Nicole... I don't think it matters that much for that movie. I went back this Bethany on this one. Like, like, I don't really think it matters because it's so hyper reality. Well, a love story, and I don't buy the love story. Well, Nicole Kidman yeah. doesn't have chemistry with anyone, so it didn't really stand out I think out she has me. chemistry with Jude Law and Cold Mountain. No. I haven't seen Cold Mountain. I, I think she yeah. does best when she's in non-romantic parts. She's yeah. something a little, like, cold about her. But yeah. I but I guess for me it works okay because, like, he's obsessed with her. And, like, I think it's okay that she's still kind of cold and distant. I think for the character she's playing in that, yeah, it yeah. works. So I'm not bothered by... Yeah, well, I mean, a big part of the movie is his perception of reality. Yeah, isn't exactly what reality is. I also like, he's writing the book; it's his also, version of her that he sees and like yeah. is like. But I think they're idolizing both, like, quite good-looking people. But I think like the worst they've ever looked is in that movie. Like I think the like mm -hmm. color of hair and the way they're lit and the way the makeup's done on them. I just oh, think they that's did the such worst a beauty filter on you though. Like the glowy skin, like they I put like, like a lens on like that the really camera. dark hair. That's like I know she has like consumption or whatever, but she looks like it. I'm like you well, look. Ill. She's supposed to. She's <laughs> done. No, but like I know, but I'm saying, but like everyone. Spoilers for Mulan beautiful. Rouge. Twenty years later. <laughs> I'm just saying that like it's like if the idea is like oh you look awful because you're dying, then I agree. But I everyone's like oh she's so stunning and beautiful, isn't it sad that she's not? I'm like no, she looks like she's dying. <laughs> like I yeah I don't know. I'm not. I'm probably not a good person to weigh in because I I don't like Nicole Kidman that much as an actress. She seems I'm sure she's a nice person, but 
I, she, I would say she's a good actress. I don't know that she's a nice person. <laughs> I don't know nothing about her besides I, I, she really likes the movies. Like yeah. AMC. She did those commercials. <laughs> They're hilarious. Yeah. I know. They are that's, very that's, funny. They're so me now. Yeah. <laughs> Although someone like Jessica did comment about Michael King. Although it was Val Kilmer. I'm sorry. I'm a Batman nerd. But like she was in Batman, but like she her character kind of sucked in Batman. Like I was like, oh God. Like she was one of those nosy reporters that I'm like, it's amazing someone hasn't murdered you yet. Okay. Like, how you know, are you, you know who she had chemistry with? Did you all <laughs> ever see this? Is like I feel like really a throwback. And I watched it a lot because my parents owned a copy of it, but far and away. I hate that movie so very much. I haven't seen it. So I it's like early. That's, so that's Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise when they were together. Oh wow! And that they is have awesome. chemistry. I thought eyes shut and they were together. <laughs> like they ha- I thought they had chemistry in that, but they that was like a long time ago. Yeah, um, I forgot that they actually were in a movie together. Besides okay. Eyes Wide Shut, I, the only thing I always think of Nicole Kidman in those like itty bitty underwear in that movie. I feel like that's the scene that always gets like played. I never like, saw that. I haven't seen that, but now I want to because she has like miles of leg. Like, yeah, I would. I would want to see the itty bitty I underwear. Think, I- the, it's pervert. because people want to see her in the itty bitty underwear slash i think you can see her nipples through the like tank top she's wearing there so. are so many nipples like yeah. in all of cinema like we just watched anaconda the other day and i'm like those are nips and you're getting away with it because she technically has a shirt on but that is yes. a see-through shirt those are nips <laughs> i'm here for nips you know i loved far and away too but also i grew up watching it a lot because we had it on yeah. vhs I'm I'm a movie person, not a film person, if that makes sense. So like I haven't seen Far and Away because I feel like that's a film. Eh. Yeah. You it's, know, a, like, it's a historical romance. That's a film. <laughs> like I, so, I'm watching John Clyde Van Damme movies. This <laughs> is you had on VHS. It must have been on two VHSs. I no, think it like, might have been. <laughs> it was it's so long. Oh man, that's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> the kids don't know when you had to have when you're watching Titanic and you had to change it out yeah. mid, mid shipwreck. We only ever watched the first VHS of Sound of Music and the movie would just end there and we would never watch the sad second half. I, I completely oh, support that, honestly. That's fair. I watched a lot of the stuff. You know what? It's because I wasn't allowed to watch very many things. So the things that we did have, we watched a- frequently. So, yeah. Yeah. My parents kind of didn't care what i watched same like i was not supervised and i probably should have been because <laughs> i remember seeing brahm stoker's dracula you know the francis Ford coppola version at eight years old you should not be watching that at eight years old but no one yeah, stopped me lot. i feel like if i was eight years old i'd be really bored watching that movie are you there's like weird there's a semi nudity and like vampire murder like i was wrapped in attention to the screen <laughs> yeah i mean, i feel like it's like a very erotic movie but i'm not sure if an eight-year-old would like totally pick up like they pro- an eight-year-old probably would understand something's going on but maybe not exactly like what the subtext is oh i went to school and told all of my friends about it i was like did you guys see this movie because i saw this movie we should play dracula and it was a problem <laughs> You were that kid. <laughs> I was that kid. And then, like, my mom just didn't care what I was doing. But, like, I had all the, like, she has all the Steven Seagal movies on, like, VHS. So, like, I remember being five and seeing Under Siege, The Elbow, like, whoosh, the break. So, like, I have weird memories of films as a kid. <laughs> I was obsessed with Harrison Ford. So, like, I loved every movie he was in. Oh, my gosh. Including, like, The Fugitive and, like, all of those. Oh, yeah, I was then... a Harrison Ford Jack Ryan moment this summer. Summer, um, where I watched them all, like Air Force One. Solid. Get off my plane! Yeah, yeah. I love f- movies. I don't want to watch films. <laughs> I love that era of Harrison Ford. Um, and then I also remember my friends were not allowed to watch Grease, which I thought was so weird because, like, it didn't occur to me that a musical would be inappropriate. But I was not I allowed to watch the- Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is a children's movie. <laughs> Well, wow. but have you guys listened to the lyrics of Grease Lightning as oh, an adult? Oh, yes. yes. Really oh, my God. Now I'm like, oh, So okay. one time yes. it was on TV and my dad let us watch it. And then my mom was, like, so upset with him. Which, Bethany, you could do totally a Sandy costume with that wig. I did. I totally you could. could. Yeah, it's yeah. a multi-purpose wig. I was telling you earlier. So, yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, 
But yeah, no, my mom was like very upset that my dad let us watch Grease on TV. And it was on TV, so it was kind it was of like sanitized. This one. But I never saw Grease when I was jumping young. into the bun in the background. <laughs> I never saw Grease when I was younger, but it wasn't because my mom was like, thought that I shouldn't see it. She just doesn't like it. And if she doesn't like it, it then we just don't watch it because it's not good. Yeah. We would not spend time on that. <laughs> I, loved, I loved a musical. So My I'm mom was very into like Rodgers and Hammerstein, so I oh, watched yeah. lots of that. I loved The King and I. That was like oh, my yeah. obsession. Which in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, I got some questions about it. <laughs> Especially yeah. some of the songs. Uh, most of the songs. <laughs> now that I think about it. but you know. I was always a My Fair Lady girly. Oh. I didn't watch My Fair Lady till college, but it is a great movie. Oh, I watched it. We did a lot of my uh, The Sound of Music. I didn't see The Sound of Music until I was in college either. So oh, really? I missed that one. Listen, yeah. I mean, I my have... 16th birthday was a big deal to me for no other reason. 16 going on 17? Because then you're like, yes. <laughs> Listen, I had the experience of like growing up and as like a 12 year old thinking that Liesl's story was so romantic and thinking the Captain and Maria was super boring and then watching it as an adult and feeling Ooh, the opposite. Seeing Christopher Plummer do his slow clap. I was like, when I was a kid, like watching that as a kid, I was like, they're old, like whatever. Yeah. yeah. That, that's not clap. It did things to me. And then you also start thinking, like, the captain fucks. I mean, look at all these kids. Like, he's. He fucks. He fucks. Well, he look fucks. at how many children he has. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's how I know. No condom. He yeah. fucks. Yeah. It was very disappointing the first time I saw what the real Captain Von Trapp. And Maria looked like I was like, oh, that's not Christopher Plummer. Uh, I'm not going to look Julia that up. I don't want to. Very, very much not. Know. I want them I don't to be hot in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, most people are not, especially then. Like it's not, you know. But I'm sure they had great personalities. Oh, I also loved this problematic fave, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That's why great. I gave you a great book. I know. I'm excited to read it. Yeah. I liked it too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they are not hot at all. This is I'm true. fine with them being imagined hot. You know what I mean? Like, I know, like, a lot of real figures weren't that hot. But, like, I don't care. <laughs> and sometimes they'll say that, they, like, um, what is her name? Empress Sissy is supposed to be, like, this great beauty. And, like, she's okay looking. But I'm like, this must have been 19th century beauty, like, great beauty standards. Like, sometimes I'm yeah. also like, I don't. I don't think like we had the same beauty standards we're working off of here. It's like, oh damn, she has all her teeth and she has a dowry. Oh. Oh. She also had like crazy long hair that she was yeah. like obsessive about. Yeah, that was it was probably like, like ratty and split ends. And no, she was like she oh. would spend like four hours a day like getting egg washes and having it like meticulously combed and braided. Like oh it was a whole process. Wow. Yeah, she also had an ED. I feel like. Sissy had kind of a hard hard time of life. <laughs> We've got off in a lot of directions today. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the point of book club. Yeah, that fun. is the point of book club. It is fun. Um, oh, Since no. we're all in creepy doll costumes, do we all have favorite creepy dolls in media? I mean, Chucky, obviously. Or like just in pop culture. Have you seen like Chucky, Mara? I feel like creepy dolls I are usually have... just like background creep, except for Chucky. Like they're not like the central characters. Well, I mean, there's recently there's been some creepy doll movies like Annabelle and stuff. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. I saw Chucky when I was younger. It's been a long time though. Yeah, I remember thinking it was kind of funny. It was it was kind of like a horror well, comedy, right? The first movie is horror and then they're like fuck it we're gonna make jokes oh, maybe i saw one of the later ones then yeah and then they just get weird and they're like okay whatever we're gonna make it like like freddy krueger movies like nightmare movies as they went on they got stupider and stupider and like weird funny jokes yeah so it, it's the same like uh trajectory i right. think as a nightmare series yeah they're dolls who fuck. <laughs> they fuck too, apparently. They're, they're anatomically oh, they correct, and they make I a mean, doll. Baby. Wow. That's laser. Like, I loved, you know, Toy Story and the Nutcracker, and I had a lot of dolls. So, like, this whole dolls are inherently creepy thing. I'm like, what? Dolls are great. I love I, oh, I porcelain doll know. route always has creeped me out. Like, a sp and honestly, it's more dolls in quantity. Yeah. 
like a really like, wait, anything room, in quantity besides gold. books is creepy. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, like China in quality wouldn't freak me out. Like if you had a bunch of dishes you were collecting, anything with faces in quantity. Yeah, it's like the uncanny valley of having all those dead eyes staring at you. I don't know. It's like the American girl dolls. dolls. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of scary. But I'm not creeped out by like a stack of stuffed animals on a bed. No, yeah, not like not as much. Not the same thing. There's something about like the the humanoid quality that's creepy. And the staring. I, mean, I don't eyes. know. Dolls still don't freak me out. Maybe I've seen ho- weirder shit in life, but like dolls are fine. I'm like, okay. I think I feel and about all of Amanda's creepy dolls. Pops are plotting their revenge. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? I have. I don't have problems with dolls. I have like a million behind me. I don't find no. clowns as creepy as a lot of people do. Oh. Like in terms of the reality of what a clown is, Same. that's scary. But like the the this like the person of a clown, like the look of it, doesn't scare me. Yeah, I'm not like freaking out by clowns either. I mean, if you make anything evil, obviously that's the scary version of it. But you had a clown scary. doll growing up, so like. I was that's combining the two, so I was perfectly fine. With Get both. your love to, to your parents. They're like, you know how we're gonna make sure you're not afraid of two very common things to be afraid of. <laughs> it was a clown people. doll that like it he had like if you like pulled on the bottom, it like stretched out and as it would like um retract, it like played a little song. Like its torso. <laughs> it's like he pulled its feet and it like pulled it out because they were like stretchy like and then as it like rewound itself back up and the feet went back up then it would play a little jingle that should definitely be in a horror movie yeah that's uh, a horror play it every night it was part of the bedtime out. it plays a song <laughs> part of the bedtime routine was the playing with the Leanna, I love you I I want you that, that. I'm like, like we're learning so much you about you Leanna <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's like a music box but instead it was a little yeah yeah. and slowly but surely it got closer and closer to you until it, yeah. it, it attempted to strangle you yeah. yeah i don't know i feel like i read more books with creepy dolls than saw movies with creepy dolls yeah i think so too i think so too and i feel like i've se- just seen a lot of like hoarders episodes with a ton of dolls and that honestly is like the scariest co- <laughs> version of dolls i've ever seen <laughs> I feel like the only time that i remember seeing a creepy doll is in the haunting of bly manor Hmm. I mean, oh, Poltergeist is yeah. like the creepy Jack in the Box and everything. But like, you know what? You know what? I saw Toy Story before I saw any creepy doll movies. And so, like, Deep is wonderful. No, I learned be nice to your toys. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I've been very that, nice like, to uh, my toys, so that's why I'm not scared of them. Because I'm like, we're cool. We're buddies. Like, yeah. I've been very nice to my dolls. They're not gonna murder me. Yeah. Well, growing up in Toy Story, I thought that the like hobbled together dolls were creepy. Oh, like, they were mostly sad. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were mostly sad because they were like I they know, were nice. But I still Hell, thought they were tortured. creepy as a kid. <laughs> I mean, the initial responses, but then after that, you're like, oh, you poor like they're like um, it's like a prisoner of war camp. Like, <laughs> like so as an adult, that's how I feel. As a child, I thought they were creepy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's where all the dirty jokes are because she's like, you know, like the character legs. She's a hooker because she has a big hook. <laughs> Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're, pun. that's what the dirty jokes are in that movie. But like I learned to be nice to your toys. So that's why I learned that you can never get rid of your toys because then they're sad and they sing a really sad song to you and you're trying to get them. I know away. that was a I whole not other layer of trauma that. I knew we're not that. looking at right now. I'm just saying, like, I'm nice to toys so they won't murder me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a solid policy. Like I'm nice to Siri. I say please and thank you. Because yeah. the robot overlords will rise up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had pretty like basic politeness. We had pretty like long running, elaborate like games of make believe with like the toys. So like they all had names and personalities, and like we interacted with them like they were alive, and like talked to them, and they would they would make we'd make little voices so they talk back. So like the idea of like hurting them or getting rid of them, it's like, but that's like a person I grew up with. Like, oh, we can't do that. Yeah. I don't think I had any toys I like abused. <laughs> I'm not traumatized by you all being children when toys were. I know. I was in elementary school. I was a kid. I was a I little was kid. A chill- yeah, I was yeah. a chalet. 
cute. I that feel was like also it's the empathy for other people, you know. That like was also nice like people who don't you don't think deserve the niceness. Like, oh, toy, it's not real. I don't have to be nice to it, but it taught me to be empathetic. So I feel like you know, even though it's it's probably scarred me for life in different ways, it taught me to be empathetic at least. So there's that for everyone that you don't have to you know get rid of an old friend just because you have a new friend. But that was like the first, um, like sort of like the three D like computer generated looking mm -hmm. animated movie. I remember yeah. that was like such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it it blew everyone's mind. Yeah. Yep. When did oh. Toy Story come out? That's I like ninety five. Oh yeah, I was very little when it came. I was. Yeah. It must last. have been later than that, as I don't think I would really remember it. If it yeah, came I thought out. it was ninety seven. It sounds. It's like mid nineties. Yeah. 95. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was, I was four like, when it came out. I was eight. So, uh, I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. Right. That's how Depending when it came I was probably eight. Yeah. When it came yeah. out that year. Mm -hmm. I thought it was older. I well, thought it was not as old. I remember the Disney Renaissance ones being when I was like a, a young child. Mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing Aladdin so many times in the movie theater. My poor parents. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I knew, yeah, and I remember when Toy Story came out, thinking like, "This is different. I don't know about this." <laughs> Beth was thirty-seven. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just different. Um, graduated. Seven or eight. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was definitely, I was like eight when it came out. So yeah, me too. So we're like the same age, almost exactly. Too. I mean, no, you're two part. months older than me. So I am. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> two older, months, wiser, two months older. 87, right? Eighty-seven babies. Eighty-seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I, I'm February. I'm, I'm like the oldest. Yeah. Yeah. You're you the, are. the wise one of the group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was Man is but, but a child. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Okay, Leanna. I remember a while ago. <laughs> no, he wasn't even born yet. There you go. There you go. Yep. Listen. We've it's got kind of that situation. I'm like, we had to just be 30. I remember yelling at you, telling you to just be 30 already. <laughs> it happened eventually. Yeah. I know, but I forgot. I remember I was drinking a bit and I was like, Leah, why aren't you 30? Just be 30. It's out of my hands. Talk to my that. mother. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. I love this. We have, listen, we have a wide range. We got a range. Here. It's good. Yeah. It's good. yeah. I moved my wig. Now, now I feel your '90s comment more when you style it like that, mm -hmm. like the '90s Bob. It feels like it, like '90s, like hot lesbian. And I was telling it's her, if it was, like, if it was blonde, it would be very like suburban white mom. Yeah, it could go yeah. also Kate Goslin. No, you easily. know what it is? It's Reba McIntyre. Uh, <laughs> works to well, let me go. Works two Reba jobs and never stops. <laughs> She only really has the one lip. She doesn't have an upper lip. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, a variety of opinions on this book. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I feel Coming like back. we all thought it was like reasonably well written, even if yeah, we yeah. all enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Art is subjective, but it's also objective. And objectively speaking, and I do think, I think we did all, a good job. I think subjectively we all agree. gross. <laughs> that it was, yeah, that it was unpleasant. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. intentionally so, but before no October. Yeah. yeah. I think. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I finished it and I rated it one star and all I could say, what the f actual fuck was this? <laughs> so that's my official review on Goodreads. What the actual <laughs> fuck? Like, there's no magic. I thought this was going to be a fucked up Pinocchio. Oh, I'm very behind on Goodreads, but I don't know what I'm going to say about this. Probably tell people to go read The Bloody Chamber. Yeah, the bloody chamber is great. If you liked this, you should definitely read the bloody chamber yeah, for sure. <laughs> and if you like the idea of this, but you were so so on the execution, mm -hmm. also go read the bloody chamber. Okay, so here's a question: Did we decide for sure that we're doing like twenty forward, twenty forward, twenty twenty forward? I think that's our theme. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I came up with it last time and no one came up with anything else. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was a great idea. Well, I have a book. <gasps> what is the book? Hexwood by Diana Wynne Jones. Ooh, Did I love Diana Wynne Jones. 
didn't and it has it time it? travel in it so we can Ooh. dress up in whatever way you feel is uh, appropriate for a time travel theme okay I love oh, it man. i don't know how i'm gonna do that i know what book i'm picking you too. can literally just wear what you're wearing i know right what book now, i'm Mara. picking too Oh, oh my god, are we like no, way are like on top of things? Okay. I'm in April. You can you can you've got literally a full calendar year. I'm That's I'm not I time. don't know yet. But <laughs> if you guys know what you want, we can tell people. Okay, so Hexwood. I'm excited. I um House Moving Castle is like yeah, an all-time fave. So cool. Okay, and then I, you don't have to lock in, Amanda, but if you know, do you want to tell us what um, you're thinking? I'm trying to figure out who the author is because I don't remember right now. Um, I have it around in my house somewhere, but it's called Calamity. And it is a futuristic sci-fi romance. Oh, this. I have an early copy on my yep, That's this it. One? That's the one. Constance Faye. There you Constance go. That's the author. That's my pick for uh, okay. Uh, cool. What, what is it about? Sci-fi romance, baby. Enemies to lovers. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a ramshackle spaceship, a misfit crew, and a big problem with its sexy newest member. Oh, okay. Wait, what was the last? Uh, yes. Constance Faye. Oh, and it's on Kindle Unlimited. Oh, nice. It's yeah, on Bramble, because- which is Tor's latest imprint for just romance, like fantasy romance, like fantasy sci-fi romance. Yeah. So it is... 24 it has it happens in the future so calamity the constant space okay. nice my book is going to be six wakes by mer lafferty which is a uh locked room mystery in space yeah. <laughs> i've been uh, wanting to try mer lafferty so that's her writing is good and like her I never have a bad time in her books. Some of them are more successful than others to me. And this one I think is very successful. It's a, uh, they're all like in like, um, stasis pods. That's what I'm trying to get to. Uh, y'all are on a- with no audio though, which I'm like unfortunate about. Oh, I think that that one has audio. It should. It's on aud- on audible at least. So I don't know. I'll I'll take a look. It was a I mean it got like a Hugo award and everything, so it'd it be should shocked. have it. Some people though are not doing audio uh, um, audible anymore. Oh okay. Oh um, yeah, it, it it's on Libra FM. Oh, it's also on Audible. I see it. Oh, I don't know. I looked it up on Amazon. It didn't come up with an Audible like an audiobook option. Oh weird. It has an audio. It has, does have a, yeah. It has an audio. Oh wait, never yeah. mind. I can't read. I've been drinking a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but it's a, a space adventure set on a lone ship where the clones of a murdered crew must find their murderer before they get killed again. And it's a good book. It was entertaining. So okay. Okay. So. I actually tentatively have one <laughs> that I had. Okay. I, heard, I just had forgotten that I had thought of it. <laughs> the only person who has to lock in is Leah. Everybody else True. can have a provision. So these are all. These are like our tentative. But uh, for October horror, I'm tentatively thinking the Luminous Dead which is a like sci-fi horror novel i've heard really good things about um it's like i think it's Did I read this who who's it by hold on let me let me pull it's it by up. caitlin starling yes oh we also picked all lady authors go oh, us yeah. nice yeah yeah it's by caitlin how starling. very forward of us because the future is female oh i see i see so it's got like a caver on a foreign planet finding herself on a terrifying psychological and emotional journey for survival okay so it's like sci-fi survival horror nice i love that yeah. So look at us. Look at us being like responsible adults. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm adding that to my list. And it does have an audiobook. So. Okay, good. Yeah. It's just if for my own ADHD, it's very difficult to read without audio. No, that's a, a perfectly reasonable stipulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so there we go. Okay. Well, Hexwood. Hey Bree. Yes. Hello. Dressing up is fun. <laughs> Are we going to uh, dress up next year? I yes. Have this idea. I love dressing up. That's like oh. half the reason we need to keep doing this is it's so fun. It okay. Fun. So Hexwood, I'm not sure what it's about. 
I already said time travel is in it. So dress up in a way that you feel Oh, or as a time you. traveler, you could dress as your you said whatever The prompt is time travel. So yeah. However, Mine is in space. So you can do aliens in April. Mine is also in space. So I'm thinking like some sort of space suit. We get, we get space detectives? <gasps> yeah, space detectives. So maybe I'll like form a space helmet with like a monocle built in and like a <laughs> like a like a periscope like yeah, a yeah. hole for the pipe yeah. yeah it's got like a it's like a, a almost looks like a hookah maybe like a glass like little it's a bong yeah it's basically a bong attached space bong. Of it. yeah but it's like high tech because it's in space yeah yeah since we're not locking everything in yet, I will give some thought to whether I have something that would be better for dressing up purposes. That's a good point. I'll, I'll also give that some consideration. But I wanted to think of like a, a futuristic mystery. Yeah. Like we also could do the Tea Master and the Detective, which is like these sentient spaceships. Oh. And like it's all very inspired by Asian culture. So that might be... Well, that that could I go mean, that, that could go appropriate real quick. Okay, yeah. never mind. We're gonna scratch that idea, and I did I did not even bring it up. <laughs> Stricken from the record. Yes. Well, we have January's. And we all like, I'm one. pretty sure I'm picking calamity. No matter what, that was like my my top one. It sounds great. Good. I'm here for any sci-fi. Like literally. Yeah. Well, it's it's just on do my a list year of sci-fi. Right? I mean, it's like I have it because so. it's on my TBR right now. So it's, yeah, that yeah. works out. Yeah. Great. There you go. Um, cool. So yeah, twenty twenty forward. This will be. Amanda's killing it with our theme. She yeah, also had our I OG twenty three. Well, I just say I named the book club. That's true. <laughs> You're a branding, a marketing and branding. Manager. I'm the branding person of this yes. group. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, before we end, I feel like I have to give you a twirl because that. I, yeah. I worked real hard on this and it's yes, fun to twirl. You should. I love twirls. Give me. <gasps> ah! Woo! That's amazing. It looks so good. I love it. Okay. <laughs> you missed all the compliments, but they occurred. Okay. <laughs> well, it was, it's literally all I want to do and I can't. I mean, I can't live my life in this dress, but it's the most fun I've had. In but quite you should. Time. I mean, that's so fun. I'm wearing Halloween Nothing's pajama bottoms. You. I wish Dan to be twirling, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I showed up to work on Monday in this, I think there would be some questions. Maybe not this week since it's Halloween, but I mean, I'm wearing Greg's overalls from when he was a farm boy. So <laughs> <laughs> show up to work like that for sure. I work from home. I could just be at home. You could. It's great. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. And Mara sewed this herself. Including the undergarments. That is really impressive. Do we get a tour of those as well? Um, I'm there's not really Are you wearing bloomers? bloomers? No, I didn't. I didn't do the bloomers, but I have the shift and I have the stays. Nice. Give me the boobage. That is nice. amazing. But you can't really see very well at this angle, but the, the tits are pretty impressive in this. I can't lie to you. I don't know. Like, okay, so back in the day when I was an actress. I was in um, Hello Dolly and I was playing Ermengarde, which is like the young ingenue. So this was a long time ago, if you haven't noticed. But um, at one point, someone has to pick me up and carry me around the stage because I had fainted. And apparently they had to make me special bloomers because like my ass was showing in this dress the whole time. So... Fun fact, I made a costume department make me special bloomers. <laughs> I will say, I, like, of all the things that I've made, making historical under things is very satisfying. Like, I kind of just want to... my ass, they made me bloomers. <laughs> like, there's these things called combinations, and it's like a, it's sort of like a historical underwear onesie. It's like a combo of, like, a chemise and, and drawers. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to make them because they look really pretty. It's and like should, underwear like, romper. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. it's made out of linen, so it like breathes, and you get to put as much lace on it as you want. I feel like this is this is the thing is this is like what they they run around in in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers in the house, right? <laughs> um, I can't remember, but ye, I think I remember what you're talking about. I don't know if it's the exact same thing, but yes, it's a similar concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would be the right period. 
Yeah. So. I know bloomers are like voluminous bike shorts, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, they're very fluffy. You were supposed to, but I decided I was too tired from traveling to finish editing today. So I'm going to put it up on Halloween. Which I guess is a good way to end this is, uh, does any, do people have things you have upcoming that you want to promote or whatever? Um, that vlog that'll be up on Halloween. If you want to see me listening to audiobooks and making this over like five months. Nice. Yeah. I just got my normal stuff. I'm doing a James Bond read along because um, I love James Bond books and movies. Mm -hmm. But um, I finished Vampire Chronicles and it feels like it's been forever. Sure. You've been doing that a long time. Yeah. Also, but I feel like you're the perfume queen now. Yeah. I have been doing a lot of perfume content because, like, I have an insane perfume collection. And I figured, yeah. you know what? Let's just talk about that for a minute. But um, yeah, so I've been doing perfume content and books and I don't know, the shows are coming back next year, allegedly, hopefully if the strikes end. Yeah, yeah. I've heard they're getting close, but who knows? They're back in talks. Yeah, I'm hoping. What about uh, you, Leanna? Going to Disneyland on Tuesday. <gasps> <Nice. Congrats. laughs> I was supposed to go already on the 17th, but I had COVID. So I did oh. not go. Oh, no. Well, thank you for not spreading it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if I had w been like, you know, screw it, I'll go. I was like dead. So like, I just physically could not go. <laughs> A reminder to everyone that the boosters are out, at least here in the U.S. I got my booster. Got mine. It's like a weird virginity where I still haven't had COVID. I haven't either, oh, Amanda. Really? Either I haven't. I. I've had this it This is once. my first time having COVID, okay? Oh, wow. Yeah. Not, this is what allegedly underneath all the particle board. It's yeah. I've yeah. only Because I've only had it once. Yeah. Yeah. I think and you, I mean, considering you were in New York at the height of, I mean, you were I got it, it not last summer, but the summer before my kids brought it home from summer camp. Yeah. Yeah. Children. Yeah. It hurts like a bitch, <laughs> the new booster, but having COVID is worse. Having COVID is worse. That's true. So, um, yeah. Also flu. Get your flu shot too. Yeah. I did them. At I the got same both at the same time. I, time. Don't do yeah. that. No, like, it knocks I got me out for like from two days. <laughs> yeah. Regular, just getting the COVID yeah. vaccine always knocks me out for like two or three days. Yeah. It never bothered this one. This one. Armpit? Like my armpit swells up because of my lymph oh, nodes. Oh, you know what? That's happened oh. to me before. It's the lymph nodes. That happens. Sometimes. Yeah. And like I have to put an ice pack in my armpit all day because it's like so swollen. It hurts. Wow. <laughs> Take no, this one from. was the worst reaction I've had to any. I've had six COVID shots. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I had a reaction. It was like I had the a light flu for the weekend. Oh, wow. Um, I worked from home for the last but, three years, and then I started working at this new job in a physical office and, like, learned that everyone at the company has, at some point, had COVID. And I was like, oh, great. So now that I've started working here, I'll probably get COVID. And then I got immediately. It. As far as I know, nobody at the office has COVID. So, like, I don't think mm -hmm. I got it at the office. But it's just, like, a rite of passage, apparently, for this company. Everyone has had it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm lucky that I have no small children to infect me, but I feel like everyone I know with kids has had COVID because they cannot avoid it. I mean, it's hard to avoid, honestly, at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but I possible. Like, yeah. I don't go out. <laughs> yeah. Well, well and I mean, it, because I'm immunocompromised, the winter equals hibernation for me now. So I just got back from vacation and I'm about to go into hibernation like a nice little bear. And Live I'll, your bear I'll fantasy. In. Yeah. Well, I have, yeah. Um, so I've got a video coming out on the 30th. That oh, is yeah. my like year. It'll be fun. That's like my yearly sort of like Halloween film watching and discussing. And this year, oh, nice. this drag, I'm doing all A24 films. So I saw because oh, <laughs> I'm so, a little yeah. horror nerd. So I was like, they have like an inter hard. they have an interim agreement with SAG AFTRA. So like, they do. Guys, so, yeah. So I have that coming on the 30th, which will be fun. Um, and then oh, I guess you have a mind project too that we can't tell people about, but I'm excited. Yes, for I, you. I was asking, like, like, did you announce this project or no? no? My patrons no. kind of know about it, but no, I have a secret project I've been working on, and that's also coming out like first week of November. So yeah. stay tuned. Am I a nerd because so. I'm competitive? And I went and looked back, and I was like, <laughs> maybe I'm winning, and maybe I'm not. <laughs> maybe you are. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I can't wait for. <laughs> 
Now I want to go look. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So stay tuned for that. And then like as a reminder for anybody who is interested, I am hopefully hosting a, a trip to England next May, but we need like seven more people for it to happen. So if you were interested the sign up deadline is like mid January, but you need like 25% down or there are like financing options. So the links for that are down below. Go check that out if you're interested in that. It'll be yes. fun. I have like lots of literary plans and those are all linked. Uh, I have a video, but probably the easiest place is my Instagram. I've got like pinned posts on Instagram that go over all of a lot of the details. So yeah. That is impressive. You're a teacher and haven't gotten it that's that is impressive yeah that is very impressive my sister was down for the count like as soon as they all came back from being remote yeah Yeah. all right well thanks everybody this was fun and we will be back in january on liana's channel talking about hexwood Hexwood. by diana win jones as time travelers so we'll see you in a few months have a good night bye bye happy halloween